these Zoom webinars have become like television production shows. You may begin. Good afternoon. Welcome to the New Jersey Restaurant and Hospitalities Association webinar with representatives from the New Jersey Economic Development Authority and the New Jersey Business Action Center. Join me in welcoming Tim Sullivan. Tim is the CEO of the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. The EDA serves as the state's principal agency for driving economic growth. Also joining Tim is Christina Fuentes, who is the Director of Small Business for the EDA. Melanie Willoughby is the Executive Director of the New Jersey Business Action Center, which is, the depart which is it within the Department of State. The BAC, or Business Action Center, serves as the advocacy arm for business navigating government. And I want to thank you for joining us today as they're going to talk about the new grants available through the EDA. Again, my name is Mary Lou Halverson. I'm the President and CEO of the New Jersey Restaurant and Hospitality Association. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping notes. Please mute yourself. Everyone should be muted, but this is Zoom and technology and we're still figuring it out. So if you're not muted, please do so. After both Melanie and Tim present, uh, you may type in your questions in the Q&A in the bottom and Sha will read them off and the appropriate representative or presenter will answer those questions. If we don't get to everybody, um, all your questions, we will record them and then pass them along for answers. Um, this is being recorded and will be available on the Restaurant and Hospitality's website for further viewing in case you have to drop off. And lastly, I just would like to thank Shadisha on my team for putting this together and being available to help our members answer the so many questions that we have uh, about how to uh, pre-register for the grant. So with that, um, it's my pleasure to turn it over to Tim Sullivan and Christina Fuentes. And I wanna thank all our presenters today. Tim. Great, thanks Mary Lou. Uh, and thanks for hosting this and thanks to you and your team and Shah for for bringing us together and uh, for, for hosting this webinar. Uh, great to be with Melanie, as always, and, and uh, honored to be joined by my colleague, Christina, who runs our small business effort, as we were joking offline before we got on here. No, no pressure on Christina, just being responsible for small business during the biggest small business crisis uh, of anyone's lifetime. So great to be with Christina. Um, we'll, I'll kind of cut right to the chase because I know folks are busy and um, uh, particularly those of you in the restaurant and hospitality industry don't need uh, to be reminded and told uh, how challenging it is right now and, and how um, how difficult uh, this pandemic and the economic crisis that, that it spawned uh, has been and is continuing to be. Um, and if, if we if we ever need a reminding of it, a uh, good thing we've got Mary Lou to consistently remind us of how, how challenging it is and how real the needs are right now. And she's been uh, a tenacious and relentless uh, advocate for the industry and, and, and good on her for doing so. That's exactly what she's supposed to do. Uh, and we appreciate her, her leadership and her advocacy and partnership. Um, uh, throughout this crisis. Uh, so uh, last week, uh, Governor Murphy, Lieutenant Governor Oliver, Senate President Sweeney and Speaker Coughlin, as well as Senator Menendez and uh, Congressman Malinowski uh, were together in Somerset County somewhere, I think it was Hillsborough, uh, to announce an allocation of an additional $100 million of uh, CARES Act money, CRF, you know, Coronavirus Relief Fund money, to support small businesses broadly, uh, with a very heavy emphasis on uh, on restaurants. And that's you know kind of the main event and what we're here to talk about today. So. Um, honored to be able to tell you a little about these programs. Uh, I'm going to have Christina help me out with some of the details and the particulars, but if there's one thing you take away from this webinar, other than, you know, we want to be as supportive of restaurants as we can be, and we know that this is not enough, and we know that this is, you know, going to only be a, a lifeline for, you know, some period of time here. We, we're, my fingers are crossed and, and, and you know, uh, hoping like hell that Congress gets its act together and Bring, provides the billions of dollars that, that the restaurant and hospitality industry across the country needs. Um, and frankly, billions we need in New Jersey for the restaurant and hospitality industry. Um, so point one, we get it and we, we're working hard to, to support the restaurant industry. Point two, you have to pre-register. If you do not pre-register, you will not be able to access this grant program. Pre-registration is open right now. We have had a couple of technology hinks along the way, but uh, we've had more than 15,000 businesses pre-register. You have to pre-register. Doesn't mean we're oversubscribed necessarily, although we probably have more applicants than, uh, than we can accommodate, but doesn't mean you, if you re if you register today, if you register on Monday or Tuesday, you're, you're in the same potential spot in line as everybody else. We've got to pre-register by Tuesday at five o'clock at CV as in coronavirus.business.nj.gov. If your plan is to wake up Thursday morning, then pre-register and then fill out the grant, you will not be successful. You have to pre-register. 
So, um, sorry, Shaq, could I pop you back two slides? Um, yeah, so, um, you know, as, as Governor Murphy has said from the outset, first and foremost, this is a public health crisis, but it's it's right behind it. It's an economic crisis. It's an economic crisis that's being borne by um, by small business in particular uh, and, and restaurants and hospitality or, uh, from, you know, hospitality organizations at the tippy top of that list of folks who are having challenges um, and for whom a pandemic that thrives on density and, and thrives on proximity is a particular challenge. You know, New Jersey's restaurants and our food scene is, is a big part of what makes Jersey Jersey. And, um, you know, we've got to do everything we can to support um, that uh, enorm absolutely vital part of our economy. We've had a multi-pronged approach since back in late March when this all kind of started, uh, at least for us. Um, Christina and her team have been working around the clock, our entire team been working around the clock to mobilize new programs uh, and to get the word out with great partners like Melanie to answer questions and troubleshoot uh, with her team. Um, we've had a grant program, two phases prior to this. This is the third phase. We've got a loan program that supported actually a lot of restaurants uh, uh, through that program so far, and then a number of other programs that have been stood up to support small business. But uh, importantly, in the aggregate and shop, you can give me the next slide, please. Um, as we sit here right now, we've supported 21,000 businesses with over $76 million of, of support. That number goes up every day. It's probably closer to 22,000 by now. Uh, and from a scale perspective, just, uh, just as a Point of pride for the EDA. Um, not that I, that, that's, not the, that's not how we're keeping score, but in a normal year, the EDA works with three, four, five hundred businesses directly. This is a scale unprecedented. I think it speaks to the partnerships across government, folks like the Office of Innovation and Melanie and her team, and lots of other uh, great partners inside government that have been able to stand these programs up uh, kind of on a dime and at a moment's notice. Uh, to support small business, and that 76 million will probably end up going closer to 200 million in the next couple months here as we as we continue to roll money out. Next slide, please. Um, importantly, we've got a really uh, significant focus on equity and inclusion. We know that small businesses, small businesses are not well positioned to access, uh, you know, federal programs. Uh, the smallest businesses, micro businesses, businesses under five uh, employees are are, are not uh, are, are even less well positioned. Um, businesses owned by women and people of color, uh, you know, face enormous challenges when the sun is shining and the wind's blowing at their back. So at a moment of crisis, those those uh, those dynamics only get worse. 20% of we've got a real intentional focus on trying to get this funding where it can really make the biggest difference. 20% uh, of the funding so far has gone to uh, minority owned businesses, 24%, 23% to women owned firms, 2% to veteran owned firms, 36% has gone to businesses located in opportunity zone eligible census tracts. These are uh, low income, uh, high unemployment, high poverty census tracts across the state because we reserved a third of the funding. We actually overperformed that number so far uh, to support particularly businesses in. Uh, in communities of you know, historic underinvestment. And we're gonna continue that model into, the, into this third phase here. Next slide, please. So the, the main event, the sort of battle royale we're here to talk about uh, today, and, and Christina will take you through all the particulars of this in a moment, 70 million, 70 million of phase three grant funding. Pre-registration is open right now. If you did not hear me before, let me do a little louder for people in the back. You have to pre-register. If you do not pre-register, that will be the end of the program for you. Pre-registration is open now. It's been open since Monday morning at 9 a.m. It'll be open 24 seven between now and five o'clock on Tuesday. Um, cv.business.nj.gov. Christina's gonna walk you through how to actually do the pre-registration. It's, it's, you're gonna do actually a lot of the homework that you would, if you were involved in phase one or phase two, a lot of the harder homework you had to do as part of the application, we're asking you to do it in advance. That'll make the application easier. And then for this group in particular, restaurant day is the first day of three days in which we're gonna open the application window. October 29th, 9 a.m. If you've pre-registered, uh, you will get a you know you will be able to access and fill out the application starting at nine o'clock on Thursday. So a little bit less than a week from today. That's restaurant day. Micro business is the day after. That's five of your employees, and then everybody else skip the weekend and come back on Monday morning, and that'll be uh, Monday morning, November second. So again, you've got to pre-register. Um, it's it's yeah um, it's easy enough to do that. Fifteen thousand businesses have done it so far this week. Um, you've got to pre-register, make sure to do that, and then we'll make sure to um, you know, be able to turn these applications around as quickly as we can. Uh, we do, again, have targeted funding for restaurants. We know that this is a critical in an industry that's in critical need and is a crisis uh, right now. We're doing larger award sizes this grant round. We've expanded the eligibility up to 50 full-time equivalents. We'll get into that in a moment, but it's full-time equivalents, not full-time. You get partial credit for um, Part-timers, a lot of times lots of restaurants have uh, swing staff, part-time staff. Um, this is meant to be inclusive of that. Um, and we're also, we, we will de we're dealing with seasonality. Uh, Christina will talk about this in a moment. We're going to deal with seasonality in the most, or what we think is the most generous way possible. We're going to look at your, your head count at its, at its peak, not its, not its trough. Um, and so that'll 
um, hopefully reflect the size of businesses um, and keep them uh, able to get you know, full-size grants because we, th there's a small, medium, and large component to the restaurant piece. So with that, I'm going to hand it to Christina Fuentes, uh, who uh, can t is going to talk you through the, the bulk of these programs here. Christina, thank you. Sure. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so as Tim mentioned, um, restaurants will be that first bucket essentially, and we're defining that as food services and drinking places with a NAICS code of 722. So any business that has that NAICS code starting with that 722 would be eligible to fall under this bucket. Um, you would have a physical location, you would have to be in good standing with Department of Labor, and you also have to be a registered business entity with taxation. Um, so it's very important you would have done that two-step process prior to all this happening, um, and that way you are, you know, accurately reporting to the state and in good standing. That's part of what this pre-registration process will be doing. It's the back-end check to essentially make sure you can, you know, work your way through that application and in what bucket you would be in in the day. So for restaurants, it's very important. Um, for October 29th at 9 a.m. Pre-registration was not first come first serve, but the application will be. So um, I think that's really important for people to understand. I think a lot of people were trying to get on the system at the same time, which created a little bit of a backlog for the system. So I know some people were having some issues. Those issues should have been worked out um, at this point. So a lot of people were clicking the same button probably about 10 times waiting for the emails to come. And you know now that the system is caught up to speed and everybody should be good at this point. If you're not though, you can reach out to us, get the kind of technical assistance you may need to get pre-registered ahead of time. Because as Tim mentioned, you know, you have to be pre-registered in order to access that application. Um, for restaurants, five or fewer, the maximum award would be 10,000. From six to 25 full-time equivalents, it would be 15,000. And then from 26 to 50, it would be a $20,000 grant that you would be able to receive. Um, your uses, you want to keep it to basically uh, working uh, capital, all those kind of operating expenses, inventory. I get some questions of, you know, can I use it for equipment and cap CapEx? You really want to stay away from that. You want to keep it towards what's keeping your business open on a daily basis. Um, and also keep very good documentation on how you're using these funds because um, CARES Act is spread a lot through different entities, right? Different buckets of money. So you wanna make sure as a business owner, you're keeping really good records. So in case there's ever an audit that's performed at your business, you wanna make sure that, okay, this is how I spent this fund. This is how I spent that use. And you, know, you wanna make sure you can document that if you have to. Um, you would also have to be uh, in operations prior to February 15th, 2020 as well. So even if you did open up shortly before that pandemic, you would still be eligible. I know a lot of people ask this, the question of food trucks. Yes, you are eligible. Um, when you registered your business, you would have used an address. And if that is your home, then you would use the same address when you're doing your pre-registration because home-based businesses are eligible as well. Um, and they do start with 722, so you would fit into that restaurant bucket as well, too. Um, I think next slide. So then the next bucket would essentially would be micro businesses. Um, and this would be for anybody that has, uh, as a sole proprietor, you only have zero employees because you don't have the W-2 employees, so you would fit into this. And the maximum award would be uh, 5,000. Um, again, it's still same kind of applicable kind of you know, the same legal department questions we saw for um, phase one and phase two. Um, it's gonna be general questions as well too that you're gonna, we're gonna walk through later in the slides, but it's all pretty just, you know, same information. Um, it's just different days that are, you know, these buckets of people would have to essentially apply for. So for the micro businesses, you would have um, October 30th at 9 a.m. to be on to submit your application, but you would have to still be pre-registered as well too. Next slide. And then the next bucket would accommodate anyone who has six to 50 uh, full-time equivalents as well. Again, same requirements being registered properly with um, taxation, Department of Labor, going through the certification process, demonstrating you have your negative impact established before February 15th. Um, anyone who has six to 25 full-time equivalents, you would qualify for up to 10,000. And then from 26 to 50, you're qualifying for up to 15,000. The day you would apply would be November 2nd at 9 a.m. And then 
once you'll see in the slides too, after you do your pre-registration, the system tells you as well. So you will have that reminder that kicks you, kicks that to you. But what I've been telling people is set a reminder on your cell phone so you don't forget to apply as well, because again, it's first come first serve. Next slide. Hi. Okay, um, so again, it, just like all of our previous programs that Tim had mentioned, uh, we still did an OZ set aside to make sure that we're addressing um, targeted communities. Uh, the opportunity zones are more distressed communities, so we wanna make sure that the special kind of grants and funding that we're putting up available to business owners um, is in those targeted communities. So this has the 33% um, set aside as well. Um, it's not a separate, you know, kind of program or anything like that. If you are in an OZ, we do the back end checking and the mapping. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, you know, you don't have to do this check if you don't want to, but it's really just to kind of map it so you can see if you do fall into an OZ or not. Um, we also want to make sure that, you know, we're very inclusive to people who do not, you know, or maybe don't feel comfortable speaking in English and want to ask a question. They can always reach out to language help at njeda.com to get clarification. Um, the application will also be available in Spanish as well, too. Next slide. This just demonstrates that. Next slide. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, so for phase three, this is actually for the application. And I will say um, the application slides are on the portal right now. So you can go look at the application if you would like. I highly recommend you do. So this way you are fully prepared for when it goes live. I recommend you print it out, you write it in. So then this way, when you're pulling up that application that day, you can speed right through this and know that your information is accurate. You've already looked at it, you double checked it, you triple checked it, and then you should be good to go. Um, so it's very important that you look at that ahead of time. Please do not look at it the day of, um, because there's gonna be a lot of people that are essentially going after this funding um, and you know it's first come first serve. So you wanna make sure you're prepared as possible. But this is the general information um, truly about your business entity. Um, you wanna pull your tax returns, your WR30s, so that way you're ready to go. But also you wanna make sure how you um, spent your other sources of funds too that may, may have come from CARES Act funding. So you wanna pull those documents. Okay, did you get something from NGRA's program for rental assistance? Um, did you get PPP or EIDL? PPP would essentially have covered two months of maybe rent for you. Then EIDL would cover six months of operating expenses. So now at this point, we're kind of finishing up almost some of those resources. Um, there was also county grants as well too. So if you got that, you wanna make sure you keep track of how you spent those funds. And that's what we're gonna be asking questions of. Next slide. Okay, then we'll start walking through the pre-registration process um, for those who may have not have already gone through this. Um, as I said, it's been open since uh, the 27th and I'm sorry, you have until the 27th, but it's been open since the 19th at 9 a.m. Um, 27th before 5 p.m. Essentially, you have to get this pre-registration done. Um, and if you go to the cv.business.nj.gov, you'll see the information and there's a grant estimator. There's a lot of information you can kind of walk through to help you prepare for that as well too, if you um, need to revisit anything we're going over today. Next slide. So um, yeah, so this basically just helps you get registered into the system. This is a different system than what grant phase one and phase two was. So this, whole portal is going to be completely different. It's going to look different. It's a different process. So you want to make sure you kind of just have a little patience with it and you have to get pre-registered in order to use the system. So that's what the next couple of steps do for you. Next slide. So you're going to create essentially, you know, put your email, your username, your password. Next slide. And then you're gonna create this online portal um, profile essentially, which will know you to, from this point forward, you will be in EDA system. So this will help you um, if there is future programs as well, you will have this username and password going forward. And you know, if you applied um, previously, let's say for the micro business loan, you would still see your application in there. So you wanna make sure you're picking up the right applications as you're working through this process too. Next slide. And then you're gonna confirm your email, which will shoot back an email to you to confirm so you can proceed forward. 
If it's running a little slow, I find that at night, it, the system works very easy because no one's really on at night. So my little trick has been going on at night. You have no issues. I've been telling people. Um, but most importantly, sometimes you, like if it's during the day, it seems like it's running a little slow. It's just doing circles for you. Just give it some time and wait for the email. Next slide. Once you're in that system, your, um, your profile's been created, you kick back the confirmation email, then you're gonna go back in. Um, it will essentially, you're gonna go into this pre-registration. Um, at that point, you're gonna start my registration. You'll be able to see it, these icons literally as they are. And that button to the right is what you wanna select. Next slide. Then you're just putting in general contact information here. Next slide. Then your business address information. Again, if you are a home-based business, that's what you would use, your home address. Next slide. Then this would be your organizational details related to the business. Um, if you have multiple owners, you wanna make sure that you add up to 100% ownership. If it's just yourself, then you're 100% owner. But if you have multiple ones, you would have to identify the uh, percentage. Anybody over 10%, you wanna identify here. Next slide. Um, and then this is where you would put in your EIN. Again, just general information about the business. Um, should be all basic, you know, WR30 information. If you're a sole prop, you don't have WR30, you know, you don't have the W2s, then you're not putting in anything. That's completely fine. Next slide. Same W, just identifying same information. And you can use your WR30 as a point reference as well too. Um, this is whatever you reported on that WR30, you wanna make sure you're inputting those correct amounts that you reported on. Next slide. And you would check off the boxes for your tax returns. Next slide. And then you can self-identify um, as you choose on here. Uh, there's no special set aside with the program or anything like that. It's really just for, for reporting out information that what we're we're gathering. Um, this is where you identify your NAICS code. If you don't know your NAICS code, you can go right there to that little magnifying glass and it will help you walk through how to identify the proper NAICS code for your business. Then you're also gonna wanna um, gather up the last six quarters of your um, WR30 because we're essentially, we're gonna allow businesses to be able to get the highest kind of grant award that they would be able to participate into this program. Um, so it's really important to be able to get the fullest benefit. So that's what we're allowing to do, especially for seasonal businesses. Um, you know, for the most part, summers, it's over, right? So, you know, I know no one really had a normal season, um, but, you know, you, we want to be able to kind of look at when, if you did and when you did and kind of be able to get the fullest benefit that you can possibly can for the program. Next slide. This is just general um, because it is federal, federal funding. We have to make sure you're actually eligible for these funds. And uh, when you get federal dollars, there's certain restrictions. So it's making sure you're an actual eligible business. And that's all these questions kind of walk you through. Again, if you participated in phase one or phase two, you would have seen this, um, but it's just making sure you're eligible for these actual funds. Next slide. Um, then you're going to want to check these two boxes and then you're going to put your full name. Basically, you're, you know, agreeing to all these terms above and then you move forward. Next slide. <clears throat> and then you're going to see what your pre-registration number is to confirm. It doesn't mean that's your number in line or anything. Um, some people, you know, I know the people in the beginning got so excited, but unfortunately it wasn't first come first serve. So, you know, you just want to make sure you're still applying on the right day and the, at the right time. Um, you wanna make sure your email is still correct too. It should be, um, you know, under phase one and phase two, we had some problems with people's emails, but this system should eliminate that issue because that's why you're certifying your email in the beginning when you pre-register. So on the back end, it's hopefully to eliminate those problems with emails. Okay, next slide. So the full application, again, you know, it's online now, so everybody can see it. Um, and then feel free to walk through it. Again, it's gonna be, you know, same kind of general information. All nonprofits are eligible for this program as well too. Um, home base too. And uh, you wanna make sure you just get your information in so you can move forward to your application. Um, you wanna also just make sure it's, you know, you're identifying essentially, 
you're self-certifying what your need would be for this program. So you wanna make sure you know, you're gathering all the right information prior to that actual application going live. Next slide. This is the estimator. As I was telling you, you can pull out your WR30s. You would put in an employee name, um, what their quarterly wages were, and it will calculate for you. So you could have some type of gauge of what your grant award would be. Next slide. This is just the same thing. The prior one was if you were just a restaurant or not. Um, and then this is a fairly new program that uh, EDA is working on. So right now, EDA staff is focused on phase one to help kind of small business owners be able to access um, PPP um, for any type of business who's operating, who may need to buy, you know, additional kind of mask or sanitizer and supplies like that. Uh, EDA is working to identify vendors that can provide this equipment in a bulk matter and then be able to supply that to small business owners. So phase one is really, focus towards those vendors and then phase two would be focused more towards the small businesses being able to qualify for a discount on those products as well. So um, this is not officially live yet. It's kind of announcing it before it go does go live, but it's just putting, putting it on people's radars. So I would assume for the restaurant industry where you need these large quantities of supplies, it's going to be very applicable to this kind of, you know, targeted market. So you should want to pay attention. And as you know, the program comes out live, we can make sure Mary Lou has all the information so you can communicate it to your community as well. And just making sure the restaurants understand that the program's there. And um, you know, make sure you can get to the fullest benefits of that. Um, because it would cover it's like an additional bonus of 400 per company. And then if you are in an OZ, you would qualify for the 500. Um, so it's an additional discount for small businesses to be able to tap into the uh, PPE equipment that's available to them. Next slide. Okay. I think we're just gonna do questions at the end and, uh, right? Yes, thank you, Christina and Tim. Appreciate that. Uh, I, I know we starting to have some questions pop up. We're gonna do our questions after Melanie goes, but I think Christina brought up a good point um, that a lot of counties I know specifically Monmouth and Union, and um, I, I think probably most counties have also uh, issuing grants. So certainly look into that. I know Shah started to put together kind of a list of that, um, but just even call your county office and uh, um, you know certainly worthwhile getting the money wherever you can. So thank you. Um, and next up uh, is Melanie, Melanie Willoughby from the New Jersey Business Action Center. And thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Mary Lou. Uh, and I want to thank Tim and also Christina, because it's always a pleasure uh, to be on a program with them because they are our partners. Um, they provide the money, certainly, uh, that businesses so badly need. Um, and we provide the support uh, to be able to get the information out uh, and to ensure that businesses have the guidance uh, and access to the applications. Next slide. So I, I want to talk about uh, the fact that in the beginning uh, of Remember Back to March, um, when um, COVID uh, became a reality, um, Tim had mentioned the fact that we put together this incredible cross-agency team of the governor's office, the innovation office, the NJEDA, and the NJBAC. And we all work together to provide a rapid response system with services and funds coming from the CARES Act and the EDA to businesses from the start of COVID-19 to now and beyond. So we set up this operation, which is known as the cv.business.nj.gov. Uh, and this is the, the resource for all businesses. I know that many of you out there get your information from the Restaurant Association, uh, because Mary Lou and Shaw are excellent at being able to get this information out to you. But I do want you to know that this is a resource for you um, that is available 24-7. Um, but if you go on cv.business.nj.gov, there's also a live chat feature. Uh, so go to the next slide. And the live chat feature um, has so far answered over 43,000 questions.
from businesses since March. Um, and these are the Business Action Center's experts who are on that live chat. And essentially you type in a question and it's not a robot. We essentially respond and we get an answer to you. So this is, I know for some of you, uh, a unheard of in that government is responsive. Um, and we are very responsive because we know that you are desperate and at suffering and we want to be there to help you answer those questions really quickly. And so we can answer questions for you about access to personal protective equipment. Uh, and then once the EDA program goes live, we'll have that right there on the website. So all you have to do is check back to that website. In addition, of course, to checking back with your association. We also have all the details on all the safety protocols in both the state and federal levels as they change. Many times they are updated and you can get those updates. Like for instance, OSHA had started a requirement that all businesses needed to report uh, when they had an employee with COVID. Um, and that was a new reporting requirement uh, by OSHA. And so we put it out on the website immediately, not something you might have paid attention to. Uh, we also have all of the executive orders, the Department of Health Administrative Orders and the State Police Administrative Orders. Now, I know that this sounds like a lot of orders, um, but we help to put it and frame it for you so that we can identify what it is you need to follow. So the big one uh, this uh, end of this month has been about Halloween. Yes, we have standards about Halloween. Uh, and I, lots of mayors and lots of business people wanted to know for their main streets, what were the rules about Halloween and trick-or-treating, uh, which we were able to provide. Um, clearly, we have the access to capital grants and loans. The EDA is uh, obviously linked there. But we also have all the information on what's available uh, with the counties, uh, there's also municipal grants. Uh, we also have all the SBA uh, loans that are available and we can provide you with the technical assistance uh, to be able to fill those out with, through the small business development centers who are our partners as well as the EDA who is also conducting a technical assistance program. And then of course, we get a lot of questions about what do I do if my employees have COVID? Um, and we are able to help direct you to where to get the answers to those questions. Next slide. So for those of you who may not be familiar with the Business Action Center, we have a long history of service to the business community. Why we have been uh, serving businesses for over 30 years, um, and we have been doing it uh, when we were the part of the Department of Commerce, but now we're part of the Department of State. And so, Clearly, what we pride ourselves on is the fact that we have the expertise of government programs. We understand the government bureaucracy, and we understand the, how to develop the contact you need uh, to be able to deliver to you solutions to your business problems. And I know during this recovery time, you have a lot of questions that you need answered, um, and they don't all relate to money. Um, you know, many of them may very well relate to questions related to the Department of Environmental Protection or related to the Department of Health or the Division of Consumer Affairs. Um, and we'll be able to get those answers for you. So we not only have the live chat, but you can also access us at 1-800-JERSEY-7 and you'll connect right with the business advocate. And we answer that phone Monday through Friday from nine to five. And so you will not have a busy tone. You will not have to wait. We are there for you. Next page. So we have two state offices that, that are there. One is our Office of Business Advocacy. So if you need help with any real estate searches, or if you want to expand your locations, if you need to consolidate in response to the COVID environment, we can help you with that. We also have a lot of contacts on both the county and municipal level. So if you're having problems with permitting or questions, you can ask us. I know that um, we had a lot of questions from a lot of restaurants, as a matter of fact, who were concerned about who do they talk to for heaters? Where do they get the basic standard for being able to put them up uh, on, for their outside dining? And this is all basically fire code. 
uh, and a spire code in it within your municipality. Uh, and so the governor's office did not put out a standard because you had to go to each municipality for that. Um, so that we were able to advise restaurants about that issue. We also have the Office of Small Business Advocacy, and this is where uh, near and dear to our hearts are all of our small businesses who really do not have staff, right? We're their staff. We're the ones that they come to for mentoring assistance, for licensing and professional certifications, for procurement assistance, navigating regulatory processes. Sort of think of us as, as an extension of your business. Next slide. So in recovery, which is what we're focusing on now, um, so that we can help you all. Um, so we can help you with uh, technical assistance for financial stability, sort of meaning to look at your budget and try to decide like, all right, so how much more money do you need in order to keep going? Um, of course, we all have the guidelines for operating a business safely. We also can help you with the state required mandated employee benefits. Um, we also can help you with any of the local government requirements for your water, sewer, fire, plumbing, electrical, and heating. Next slide. So um, the Business Action Center has operated where it has been a one-on-one -on -one person to person um, and answering the hotline. But we decided that we really needed to have a much broader, broader reach. Uh, and so that cross-agency team I mentioned um, got back together and developed this new business-friendly system um, so that now all the knowledge of the BAT Business Action Center lives on the new website, is easily accessible. Um, and so now you can have one-on-one -on -one personal act interactions with the live chat, answering over 300 questions a day. But the EDA has a grant that goes live. We answer over 1,400 questions a day. Um, and we want to thank the EDA for keeping us on our toes. Um, our website is in a constant state of being updated. Uh, and uh, I would say that we update it about three or four times a day. So you always need to come back. Next slide. So here is the website, business.nj.gov. Um, so it has a robust search function so that if you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and want to know, gee, do I need a license if I want uh, to start a food truck? You can put that into the search function and you can have it come right up. Um, if you, you know, decide that you want to talk to someone about that, you'll have to wait till eight o'clock in the morning uh, to, to get us online. Uh, but we are a bit more than happy to talk to you about that. We also have crafted the website so that it say, talks about when you're planning your business, when you're gonna start your business, operating it and growing it. So we have levels of complexity for you when you're starting your journey. We also have those business starter kits. So we have one on food trucks. We have one on your business going online. So doing e-commerce. So if you decide that you're going to have outdoor dining, indoor dining, and you want an e-commerce business, um, all of the requirements are there. Uh, we also have over a hundred FAQs that you can I have too many phones. Um, we also have over a hundred FAQs that'll explain all of the different ways of doing business in New Jersey. Next one. So if you need to create a business plan, the whole process for creating a business plan is right there. Uh, and you can do it step-by-step step right on the website. Sorry about the phone. Uh, we also have important due dates for your license renewals, for your tax statements, for your reporting forms, and also about filing annual reports. I can't tell you how many businesses call us because somehow um, they are hung up by the fact that they forget to file their annual reports, uh, which you have to do every single year. So uh, we help you with that. Um, and also we have a lot of companies that have problems with accessing the premier business services, we, which we can also help you with. 
we now have a pilot program that we're working on with the Department of Treasury, where we have a direct line uh, to the folks in the Treasury uh, to be able to get answers more quickly. And if you want to contract with the state, um, we certainly can help you with that. Next slide. So in conclusion, I really want to leave you with the, the fact that the Business Action Center and the Economic Development Authority, we partner and we're going to bring you the information, the services and the benefits you need in recovery. Um, and we do that um, to ensure that you have all the information that you need, uh, not only the, the dollars, but also really that we help you one-on-one -on -one personal attention. It's free, it's confidential, um, and we care. It's all centralized in two critical websites for you to connect at cv.business.nj.gov and business.nj.gov. And those live chats are there Monday through Friday, eight to five, with experts ready to answer your questions quickly. And I think the one little anecdote I wanna leave you with um, is the fact that when we actually um, are answering people's questions, they all say, well, this is refreshing. I'm actually getting answers to my questions from a business agency. And we say, that's because of the fact that we're from state government and we really care about you. Thank you. And here's our important websites and hotlines. Uh, and so thank you. And it was a pleasure. Thank you, Melanie. Melanie, would you do us a favor? Could you just put both the website and the, um, uh, the telephone number in the chat room? Absolutely. Uh, that would be great as well as props, uh, Christina, if you could as well. I, I know that there's okay. some questions. So uh, again, before I turn it over to Shaw for the, uh, the Q&A portion, again, just wanna thank both Christina, Tim, Melanie for um, your help and guidance. Uh, you know, this is, you know, very difficult time, especially for restaurants any, and so any support, we certainly appreciate it. And don't wor worry, Tim, I will be back at you again for more money soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Shad, you, I'll leave it to you. The first question we have is about the duplication of benefits. Uh, someone received the PPP loan. Um, they're out of that funding. Does that mean they're, since they received the loan, does that mean that they're not eligible for the grant? No, they would still be eligible. Yeah. Should be okay. The basic rule is you, you can't get paid for the same expense twice if you used PPP. You can't get federal funding for the same expense twice. So if you use PPP for your April payroll and now we're in October, you're good to go. Okay. Grant for an October payroll. And I don't think I mentioned that you can get um, phase one and phase two funds as well through our grant and still be eligible for phase three. It doesn't preclude you from you know pre-registering and applying for phase three. Our next question, um, it, you have to certify a need, your need for the funding. What exactly is considered a need? So that was basically your loss of revenue throughout the whole pandemic and you would identify what that would have been to your individual business. It's a self-certification of your need. Next question, is there any particular restrictions on a business in order to receive the grant? Um, well, you can't be, there's, I went through that slide where there were some businesses that were restricted. So, um, you know, if you're in the adult industry kind of uh, business, um, that's precluded from federal funding. Um, so you can't get those grants. Um, but I think there was some other like flea markets, maybe Christmas tree <laughs> vendors, like it's some random, but there's specific questions um, that I went through in that slide that that's the basic restrictions for eligible businesses. Um, next, uh, someone went to the grant estimator um, and in the end, it says use link to return within 28 days. When they went to use the link, it said the link is invalid. Is that maybe they need to try again to use the link later? 
Um, are they going through the posting that was for phase three, maybe, or are they accessing the older link? I mean, so there was different phases of the grant, but if they're using that posting from phase three and you scroll down, um, I'm on that thing constantly, but I know there's a lot of information. You just got to make sure you're using the right phase, Okay. but it should be working. Okay. Next question. This individual registered it, but still hasn't received their email that they completed the application. Um, when you log back into that system, you would have seen, like they need to go back in and double check um, that you are registered. So that's the really important thing. It's going back into that portal, not relying on an email saying you are registered. You wanna go in, log back in, and then see your pre-registration pre confirmation, like you're done. It will say that it's completed. Next question. What if we don't have a WR30 by locations since we use pass through entity to pay wage? Um, we'll come back to that question. Uh, I don't understand. In the food service business, we answer 43,000 questions a day. That's, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Someone needs to make an adjustment to their application. How would they, they do that? Um, I'm going to send, I'll put in the email so that way they can touch base with our customer care and be able to get in contact with the right person to make the adjustments. Thank you. Um, the next question is where can they see the real application in advance? Um, it's already posted on the COVID portal, the cv.business.nj. Gov. That's the same posting that I keep mentioning today. It's literally, it was updated on 1023 today. So it's right at the top. So the same kind of link that you used in order to access the pre-registration, that's where you're going to go through the COVID portal to access that and you'll be able to see it. Next, if your FTE in one of the previous six quarters exceeded 50, does that um, exclude them from the grant eligibility? No, that's why we're asking for the six. Okay. Yeah. Trying to say, we're trying to say yes to as many people as we can within, within the rules. Yeah. For seasonal restaurants, is FTE employee calculation based on yearly average or what it is on the date of grant application? What so, was it again? I'm sorry. It, for, for the employees? Season, for seasonal restaurants. Yeah. Their FTE employee calculation. So it's based off the six last six quarters. Okay. That's what they need to pull. Okay. Okay. Can someone help me with application? I'm really not good with applying or filling out forms. I'm just myself doing everything with the restaurant. Would, the, would that be the business action center? Uh, yes, we actually can, can help them. Um, with that and refer them actually to a small business development center to also help them if it gets a little more complex. So have them get in touch with me. Okay. I put my um, email there. Okay. Uh, someone thanks us for including you, Melanie. They're very happy you're here. Oh, <laughs> a fan base. Okay. If I made an error with the number of people in the pre-registration application, will I have an opportunity to correct the number in the final application? Need to get that fixed now. Okay. They fix it now. Yeah. Yeah. Email that same email that uh, Christina's okay. gonna send around. Oh, I just found the right chat. I'm sorry, I was in the q and <laughs> I didn't understand what, okay, sorry. And now I can see where to post it. Um, I think that is all the questions. Um, wait, one person, I am going to let's see if I can find them so they can ask their question. Did we have somebody email you earlier? Um, yes, I, I did the email questions first. Oh, okay. Um, Jignesh, I've given you the permission to talk so you can ask your question. Um, you can unmute yourself on your end and, and ask your question. Okay, uh, so this was uh, in regards to uh, the WR30. So basically we are paying our employees through one pass-through entity 
and uh, we don't have a WR30 by location. So how do we handle that? Um, are you talking about one? And how about you just reach out to me directly so I can, okay. because there's so many questions I have to ask you based upon just that one question, because are, do you have multiple businesses? So is this one business entity? Like, so okay, I'll, well, I'll send an email to you. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah. Okay. I, that was the best way I can. I didn't know how to ask this question. No, it's totally fine. But they're like, his one question will have me ask 10 more questions. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I guide him in the best way. You know what I mean? Yes. And I'll send you his email. I have his email as well. Great. Thank you, Chef. Okay. It looks like we do not have any more questions um, here. So, so um, just again, this is being recorded. So if you've missed or you came in late, um, this will also, because, you know, unfortunately Fridays uh, um, in the afternoon are a little rough for restaurants. So we are going to be distributing this out to our membership. Uh, and then, you know, obviously I know that you guys are always so accessible. So again, you know, Tim, Christina, and my friend, Melanie, <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, and it really is a, a great resource because it is very difficult and challenging for small businesses to navigate through government um, and, and we appreciate you trying to make it easier for us. So uh, again, thank you for your time and I wish you all a wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm. To everybody out there, thank you again and let the association know if there's anything else that we can help you with, whether it's a grants reopening, we're here for you and together we will get through this on the, and come out the other side. So take care everybody. Amen, Thanks, have a great weekend, everybody. Take care, Thanks. have a good weekend.